right guys, bring you back in uh, on this dent here. Now, I've actually pushed most of the dent out uh, using a screwdriver up one of the drain holes. So, I've actually pushed half that dent out um, with a screwdriver. I don't know if you can see it there. There's that. A little bit blurry. So, up that drain hole there, you can see that all the way along there. Very close. Um, I've actually managed to push half, whoops, half the dent out. If we look down our straight edge, that's half of our dent gone already. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so I'm going to see if I can uh, get the screwdriver right into that corner and see if I can push a little harder. It is getting harder with the screwdriver and also bending the drain hole a little bit on the inside as I push against. The drain hole, that's fine, the drain hole can be beaten back down, you won't see it on the inside and it's right down the bottom of the door. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with how that's coming along, we'll clear out all this junk there and uh, get stuck into that and I'll bring you back in shortly. Okay, so we've got most of the dent out there boys and girls, compared to, you can see how much gap we've pulled out on there. Put our straight edge across the actual, whoops where we're doing and about oh, a mil or so in that one corner which I can't get into anyway we're going to get a storm very shortly so oh, a few leaves falling off the trees a bit of a blowy thing happening up there but the storm is actually coming from this way you can see they have had hail in, um, in Gympie which is where I live so whoa yeah, I'm reasonably happy with how that doesn't have much of a dent in it anymore. All the way across there, so... Um, yeah. I'm going to give it another attempt tomorrow. I'm going to heat this up, uh, put some cool on, uh, cool on it, and uh, see if we can shrink it back a bit. Um, if I can get something stronger to go up in there to give it a bit more of a angle on there as well, we'll see if we can do that. Um, but all in all, we've pulled most of the dent out of that. A little bit of a rumble. And we'll uh, get back into that in the morning if it's not raining. Another storm on its way. That's typical of Australia in October. Lots of storms. All right, we'll uh, bring you back in on that one. Hey guys, just bringing you back in with the door that I've started on now. So this part of the uh, door had a bit of... Um, I don't know what you'd call it, but it must have been fixed before anyway. I sanded it back to see if the um, filler was okay. It's actually not filled, it's just a, it must be just a bit of a patch where it might have um, come through. Anyway, there was like little bits of uh, flaky paint, so I've sanded it all back and put a bit of, um, what do they call that stuff, blade putty in there. So the blade putty actually just fills in little holes here and there um, and makes it smooth. Uh, in that patch. Now this guy here, the big, um, well I thought it was a big dent, looked at it from behind and put a uh, straight edge across it um, using the old trusty piece of uh, straight metal and found that uh, when I looked down and put the straight edge across and put it, this way's curved so you can't do it that way, uh, put the straight edge across, it was like three to four mil, um, which for me to try to straighten a door that's flat or it's not actually that flat, it's a bit wavy here and there, you can see down the bottom it's got a bit of a whoop-de-doo there and um, there's a mark along there into that um, pull, uh, into that spot that we will have to use a, a, a slide puller and pull it out. It's very deep. <laughs> it's like, um, how far? Let's have a look. Oh, look at that, you can see right behind it through to my finger, so you'd probably be on the old scale, a half inch or so there, uh, up to the straight bit, so we're going to have to fix that. But this one wasn't too bad, so I've actually just body filled it up uh, with, our, uh, with our bog, or body filler, or whatever you want to call it, and at the moment I've just used the, the orbital. And uh, bringing it back down, and then I'm um, because it's a, a nice long flat surface. Just to bring the surface down, I used the orbital. I, you can probably see there. There's a bit of um, texture, uh, Nico pen, um, Sharpie pen, 
as I go and I filled it, I just went, oh, that's not quite right there. So I've just put a couple of Sharpie marks on it too, uh, so I know where to put the filler. Um, so I've put two little coats of filler on that and it's come up reasonably well. So now I'll uh, get the longboard sander and we'll sand it. Now when you actually sand these things, you don't sand them across. You actually do a 45 degree angle to what you're sanding. Um, the reason being is if you're going to sand across, it might actually dip down through it. Or if you're actually sanding across from a uh, from say this angle to down here and that angle to down there it's going to give you a better finish in a flat surface um, I've been told that a million times so I've just bought this little El Cheapo sander it's a bit of 80 grit on there at the moment and it's worn down a little bit so I sand across a little bit but then I actually sand on an angle Like so, all the way across, and then back this way as well. So I'll do that a little bit, and I'll bring you back in and see if we've got to uh, do any any more filler in it. You can even see there that, that this might be a little bit of a, a dip here and there. Is it worth filling up, or is it worth shooting a little bit of um, primer on it and using our spot putty? Sorry, our uh, blade putty on there. Anyway, I'll sand it, see how we go, and I'll bring you back in. Woo, so that's a bit of hard work, but uh, that's flattened out really nicely. Uh, as we said, just that little tiny bump there. You can see where I've used the, the pen before to go, well, that's not quite right, and we've filled it up a little bit more, just two times, pardon me. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to, pardon me, spray the primer on that. Uh, a bit of uh, spray putty primer. And these aren't that crash hot, they're only a spray can. You can feel that it's getting empty and has the most awful nozzle. Laughing all over the place. Okay, guys, I'm going to bring you back in with a new can uh, in a minute. Alrighty, I've cleaned the nozzle up a bit, so we are going to get a bit of a bit of spray out of it instead of all that. No, oh, we're still going to get some of anyway. it. Doesn't matter. Has to sand it all. I just want to see how flat it is with a bit of spray over the top. Just keep the weather off a little bit. Here. Make it a little bit shiny. So I can look across it. Now, as we said, this for old car is a road's duration. So we're going to have a look and see how well we did on that one. The can's almost finished, thank goodness. We can see across it. Probably can't see very well, but the shadow itself or the um, where it is isn't too bad. A bit of bubbling. I wonder what, why. It's the same paint. <laughs> Don't know why. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So that can's just about empty anyway. So we've done a decent job at the door on the top. Um, a few more undercoats, etc. We'll put a top coat on that later. Not quite now, but that's straightened up that bit of the door quite well. All right, we'll see you on the flip side. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we've just uh, started on our little patch here. Um, as you can see, tiny bit more of filler uh, <laughs> in there. I started actually sanding back a little bit further, and you can see this guy's been filled, I don't know how many million times. He's probably had a couple of little dents. But the one thing I didn't realise is right here. There's a push in just there that I didn't see, so um, I'm going to have to just skim that uh, right there. I don't know if you can see it, that's better. Uh, just skim that there, 
to see if we can uh, get rid of that little little tiny stripe that's in there as well. Uh, so we'll sand that all the way back to, to bare and uh, see how, <laughs> how much film may be in this bit here. I don't think there is any by the look of it because it's, um, it's actually uh, pulled in there on the paint. So we'll do that after we finish this, uh, this corner up. Now, uh, I did decide that um, I'm not going to muck around too much with the corner to actually pop this out a million mile. Um, it would involve taking the whole door off. Um, the, my main focus really is to, as we know, get it on the road. I know you guys are probably going, oh, it's too much filler and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. Uh, as we said, it's been filled before, but that's okay. This guy here I am focusing on once we get the door uh, as straight as we can because that actually has been pushed in a little bit. You can see there, um, I don't know if you can see, there's probably a quarter inch of a gap, which is about four mil, five mil. Well, five mils, half an inch, not even that. About two and a half mil, uh, three mil uh, gap it sticks out. So when we put the new um, piece on here, I'm hoping that there hasn't been too much damage done to the car. So two mil isn't too much. Um, but you can, yeah, the, the door sticks out. It has been injured. And of course, pushing that in is going to pop that out a bit. You can actually see that it's curved out. So I'm going to just check that when I take that panel off to make sure that the the car isn't damaged too much and I don't think it is I'll have a look underneath um, these but old buses are pretty pretty damn strong it's only a run up against something anyway um, let's push that it ran into here clonk and of course that pushed the metal back it probably dented in there and as it pushed again into there that sort of pushed that up um, looks worse than it really is it's only you know there's a bit of muck on it now Anyway, we'll get back into the door. Uh, we do the we do the orbital first to bring it down with about a better 60 or 80 grit, um, and then we'll tackle this little bit of a bit of a part here. Um, same deal as before. Once we get that down, I like to get all these little nooks and crannies out of the the filler, and then uh, it means you can put a, a little bit of a skim coat over the top, and it's going to fill these without any holes. Um, yeah, so we'll do that and then we'll, we'll tackle this other, other little dent. I don't know if I will. I should because I've just went and discovered it. Um, get that organised as well. So, um, as we said before, once we've got all these little holes out, then we'll put that last skim coat on and we'll sand it with the long board uh, on an angle. Because if you're doing it this way or straight across, as we know, you might get, um, get some ripples. And because it's curved this way, there's no sense trying to go straight up and down, is there? Because it's just going to sand it flat. Don't want that. Um, on a curved surface that's curved both ways, I just use um, I just use a block. Uh, block it out because you can't, you, know, you can't see it. Especially on, say, a thing like Herbie, uh, the guards are curved both ways. Um, so I just use a small block and then you can still see ripples. You can feel the ripples and you can um, get stuck into fixing it. All right, we'll bring back in after that bit's finished. Uh, sorry, not finished, um, leveled up. And then we'll get stuck into this other bit. Okay, for 10 seconds or so, um, I thought while I'm skimming that other bit, I'll uh, drag the grinder out and we'll uh, grind off the, um, the paint, the flappy wheel uh, grinder and get rid of it. And what did I discover? So pretty good metal up this side and it starts to get into some serious filler uh, on this corner so that's as far as I'm going to go you can see the distance uh, between the uh, filler and the other bit so mm, um, yeah let's leave it at that and uh, just fix it up and we'll go from there I do have a um, over here in my little stash of parts I do have a spare sliding door uh, as well, but it's, as we can see, had a few issues with it on that um, front corner and the back corner, I think has a dent in it as well. Yeah, it's got a big, I can show you that, it's got a big stripe all the way along that bottom corner, so it's no better um, than the door I've got at the moment. A bit of a whoop-de-doo there, but I can use the skin 
on other bits of the car. So I was thinking if we ever get a dent, etc., we can cut bits out here and there um, off the door uh, because it's not too bad uh, in other areas. So, um, yeah, as we know, old events uh, always have a bit of battle scar on them uh, somewhere, and of course. Uh, normally on the uh, passenger side in Australia, of course, we uh, sit on the right-hand side and uh, the battle scars are on the left, so, um, yeah, so it's no better, uh, the door's no better off than this one anyway, so we'll get it all fixed up and uh, we'll uh, go from now on oh, before we go out, look, look at that, nice and shiny, almost straight. Uh, little bits and pieces that I will sand back, like this, I don't know if you can see that in area in the paint there. Probably not, I can't, but you guys can, I've got a very bad scratched up screen on this phone. But yeah, you can see yourself in it, bye! Uh, so, happy with that. Not happy with this. <laughs> so, we're going to uh, tackle this uh, area later on. Uh, today, if we get time, get rid of our little... Uh, Rusty spots there and there, all the way up through. I've got my washing, not my washing, just the rags. I, um, I hang out in there, uh, put them in the washing machine, and uh, hang them out in the van to dry so I know that where they are. All right. Okay, guys, gonna bring you back in. Uh, my lovely section of paint that uh, was okay, but um, what happened overnight is little bugs decided to. Like here, little trails of bits. Uh, it happens when you do things outside. There was a little mark there that I wasn't happy with. Um, the bug decided I'm going to walk all the way along here. It was getting late yesterday afternoon, and I didn't seal this up properly. Uh, and it um, had a little bit of a mark when I when I sanded it. So, all in all, I'll get our little straight edge. We can put it up too hard up against it. But we can see, I hope, yeah, focus on it. But, uh, it did come out reasonably, reasonably straight. When you look across it too, and the sun was shining on it yesterday afternoon in that direction, um, it looked uh, very straight. So happy with that, uh, how that came out compared to little bits and pieces, like I said, the, the corner up here, where uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Looks a bit better colour now because I actually colour matched it. Um, doesn't have to be perfect in that sort of thing. We are getting new rubbers, so don't worry about the paint on those. Uh, okay, little bits and pieces. Around here I put a bit of primer on, uh, and <laughs> overdid it here. I was getting it was getting late and I couldn't see properly. There was a, a couple of scratches there that I've filled up with a bit of spot putty. Uh, we'll get them done today with the, the coat over the top. But, um, yeah, all in all, I was happy with that I didn't have to pull that dent out as much as I thought I would have. All right, bringing it back in for five or ten seconds, so I've ground out those little uh, bits here and there to um, give it a, a better texture to, for the uh, last bit of filler to, to join to. Uh, I'll skim it up now and um, bring it back in. Okay, so, how are you going? Great, I'm glad you're doing well. Alright, so we've got most of this fixed up. Uh, a couple of little spots there with the, um, put the blade putty on. The good thing about blade putty is that it sets reasonably quickly. A bit colder here today, so I put the, um, the heat gun on it. Because I'm trying to rush everything. Um, it needs to set for a while because it does set by air, it doesn't have any catalyst in it. Um, yeah, the good thing about it, it does set reasonably quickly. The bad thing about it, it, it sets reasonably quickly. So when you've got it on the blade and you've got it in the air, you've got to work really quick, otherwise it just uh, just uh, mucks up, just pulls the, because it adheres to the um, putty, uh, the under putty, that yellow orangey, uh, like creamy stuff. Uh, that's a, uh, what do they call it, a primer putty. Um, it adheres to it really well and can pull it as you go and, and pull it 
out that it has that chemical reaction between the two paints. It's like a really thick paint. So, uh, but paint, uh, but it uh, dries really hard. So we'll fix up that and sand that with a bit of 600 uh, later today. But in the meantime, as we said before, we'll get rid of our little rusty, rusty bits. Now with this particular car or this model, I'm not actually sure which is which, these things sprout wings. Well, not actually wings. I'll show you on the front and what I mean. Um, rust grows, and as we know how rust grows, in this car, it seems to grow... I don't know if you can see it there. Maybe you can. I'll just go a little bit further. You can see that. Ooh, I'll get handle that bit. You can see there in the sunlight, it is growing like a tentacle out underneath the paint so the whole idea of getting rid of the rust is going right up to where the tentacle then don't just go well i'll rub that off there try to get right up to where the tentacles end put that in the, in the light a bit further um, because if you don't get those tentacles they're just going to keep growing have a look at this can you see there i don't know if the sun's shining on that can we get it focused or not? Yes, we can. You can see our little rusty, our little rusty tentacles going out from just that tiniest little spot. Now, this guy, uh, Maisie, used to live on the coast as well, so that doesn't help um, with the rust. But yes, yeah, so I'll have to um, do a bit of work getting uh, this, which should go back down to me bare metal. The whole thing really should. Um, eventually, maybe one day, you never know. But um, yeah, get the rust out. Get rid of the rust, it's just going to uh, eat away your vehicle. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. You can see the little rust spots still um, here and there and everywhere, but we've got the tentacles out of, out of these guys. Go away, fly. And because we've got the tentacles out, it can't grow any further out, uh, which is excellent and I'll do some uh, rust protection, rust killer, whatever they call it, rust converter on top of that and uh, kill the rest of the little tiny bits of rust and then use an edge primer. All right, I'll bring you back in shortly. All right guys, bring you back in just for a second or two. So the bottom is just about uh, done. Got a putty over the top, it's come up really nice, very pleased except for this corner here. Yeah, so I tried to draw, I put a bit more putty in that corner, trying to build it up a little bit more and stuffed it up. Put the heat gun right next to it and I <laughs> got it was on high. Blue's come back in five seconds, blistered it all, so just waiting for that to cure and I'll get rid of all that muck there and uh, fill it up a little bit more with a bit of putty because that's all it needs in that corner. Uh, the rest of it's good, really nice, I'm very happy with that. Um, but in the meantime, while that was, I was sanding all that, I decided that the top bit needed to be sprayed. Yeah, so that's where we, uh, I've cured it all, it, I've cleared it all, uh, not cleared it, sorry, I've sprayed it in the right colour. It came up really nice, um, as good as it can be, um, for my liking, just to tidy up. Um, yeah, so, uh, where the rust was, it's all gone. And it's a nice tidy, tidy finish. Look, that's the, the colour it is. It's funny when you get to seams and stuff, you go, well, that colour matches that colour, but that colour is different and, yeah, faded out and stuff like that. But it is the proper colour. It's called pastel white. There's three different pastel whites in the Volkswagen range, apparently. There's a lighter one. There is a darker one. And I don't know what the other one is, but they said there's three. So um, I went for the lighter one, and it's a pretty good, pretty good match for the rest of the car. All the other sides all done in that as well. Um, yeah, so there you go. Another bit just about done. Of course, these will get polished up. This is only the first stage. Uh, once you polish it all together, you'll uh, see all the dents and ripples and everything in the car. Um, yeah, but that's okay. Um, it's just to show you guys that you can do stuff at home. Um, this is just all paint can, the whole lot of it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the roof yet because it does have a lot of rust spots in it. Whether I'll get it done professionally um, or uh, persist with uh, pulling out all the little rust spots and then priming them all. Um, not 
quite sure yet, but you can see how rusted it is. It's only surface rust, most of it, so that's pretty cool. And a March fly that's hanging around too, they bite and hurt. So, um, yep, but when we get to that, that's just another thing. In the meantime, that come up well. Bottom of the door's all right. The other bit of the door's okay. This bit, I'm just fixing it up and tidying it up a bit. <laughs> get onto this bit later on, but yeah. So, uh, another bit done. Oh, yeah, sorry to have a look. Yeah, I finished this corner. So, it, there was nothing really wrong with that corner. It just needed matching up and tidying up to the back door. So, that whole back corner is really nice, except I didn't fix this up. You can see that there and that there. I didn't fix them up. I just uh, uh, tidied them up, painted over the top. That was where the rust was in the corner, so... We'll get it all done. The bumper bar looks like shite again because it's got overspray all over it, but that's all right. I'm not, I'm not uh, griping about that. That's my fault. So, starting to get there. Maisie's just about straight. Um, oops, sorry. Maisie's just about straight. Then we work on the front a bit. And um, Maisie's got no more rust in her. Maisie's got no more rust in her. That is awesome. There's this bit of corner to fix. That's not rusty, that's just a dent. All right, guys and girls, bringing you back in. I'm getting rid of a few spiders, so a few rust spiders um, that I showed you this morning. Uh, there were a few around the door. Actually, that wasn't a rust spider. He was just um, a, a crack in the paint and um, I fixed him up. But there were a few spiders around the place. Uh, he goes underneath here. Ooh, so I'm going to have to pull that trim off to get rid of him properly. And he's okay. This one was a, a weird sort of a thing. Um, it, yes, it had rust in it, and I'm, I'm treating it now. You can see that it's oh, getting treated. You should not put your fingers in that stuff. Uh, it's getting treated. It had a couple of spiders here and there, which is fine. But um, I don't know um, what it was, whether, you know how some people put their arm out the window, well, this is a, what they call a quarter glass, it gets open, you can open the quarter glass, uh, whether somebody used to put their arm out the window all the time and grab the mirror, and what that does of course is over the years makes, um, wears out the paint. So, uh, really weird. Um, I, I'm thinking that's what, what that is. And as we can see here, getting in and out of the car, uh, out of the van. And that wears the paint off there. And, um, yeah, so it was sort of a spot that was like, mm, okay, well, that's worn out. The paint's actually worn out. So somebody used to put their arm out the window every, uh, sorry, out the quarter vent. Maybe it was a little puppy dog. Who knows? So... And maybe that's why the mirror's broken off. So one day they might have um, uh, had a bit of an accident or something and held under the mirror as they drove into something. And we know it's had a bit of an accident in the other corner um, by the look of the paint and a uh, little bit of uh, push-up. Not on this corner, but here. Uh, it's been pushed in and fixed up just on that, uh, that corner there. Um, I've had to, yeah, had, went underneath and had a look, and yes, it's got a bit of a straightening. Somebody's uh, hit it, and this is a totally different colour. Totally different colour. I love it. So, yeah. But other than that, I fixed that corner up. It had rust in it as well, as we know from beforehand. But yeah, so this is pushed up just a fraction. Um, taken all the rust out of that and treated it as well. So... Where, uh, yeah, I think somebody used to put their hand out the quarter vent and hold on to the, hold on to the mirror or just had their arm out the window. Um, I'll show you how the quarter vents work. A lot of people don't know who are younger. You push a little button. Some of them don't even have the button, but that uh, holds the quarter vent shut really tightly so it seals. And you can open that up to get more air. Especially since in the early days there was no air conditioning, so you can actually get the quarter vent and go, my god, it's hot in here, and as you drove along, it was like a little a lot of uh, ventilation. Uh, the older Volkswagens, of course, all had um, quarter vents, uh, because there was definitely no air conditioning until the 70s in those. Um, 
Uh, I saw overseas um, on a show, an 84 model uh, air-cooled one of these. Um, that was a transporter. Had no quarter vents, I guess in, uh, it was in England. I guess in England they don't need quarter vents because it's bloody cold. So at the moment we're using a bit of rust treatment on the HT rust treatment on these. So blah, 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 it is an acid contains phosphoric acid, blah blah blah, how to do it, mm, 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 mm. brush it on, wait for it to dry, I like to brush it on, and in the paint it doesn't dry, on the metal it does, um, I actually like to wipe it off before I paint it, they say you can paint straight over it, I'm not sure, but um, I'm not going to tense it, so I actually wipe it off, uh, not with a wet rag, I just wipe it off uh, as much as I can, with a bit of, um, Sorry, what do you call that stuff? A bit of terps? No, not terps. A bit of uh, mineral mineral spirit, which is called... Um, you guys can help me out with that, but it's mineral spirit anyway. Uh, so we'll get back into that in the morning. Hopefully it doesn't rain tonight, but that's uh, fairly well coated, so uh, it's got the coat over the top of it. If not, we'll, uh, we'll sand it off again tomorrow. Uh, it's a weekend here at the moment, so I do have another day of a weekend to fix the top of the door up. I've got no paint left, but we can um, fix it up and go from there. Uh, this bit here also had a bit of the rust spots. Uh, sorry, yeah, these rust spots. Spider spots in them, so I've got rid of those and put some uh, primer filler on the top of that. And down here it ran again, so I hate that because it gets full of bubbles. My fault. Yes, because I don't prep too well and I don't take seals off and I'm just going, okay, I'll just spray this here and hopefully nothing will get on the seal. But, um, yeah, that's my fault. All cool. Getting there, Maisie. This side's almost uh, uh, complete. I'm not going to worry too much about this spider rust here for the minute. Not unless they say the MOT or the uh, Department of Transport, we call it here. Um, DMV America, Department of Motor Vehicles, uh, if they say it needs to be taken out, they don't normally because it's only surface rust, it's not structural. Uh, so I'll say you can actually say that it's been sealed, so I'll run some sealer over the top of that and go from there. So, yeah, it's been an eventful day. Really good and productive day today. Uh, out in the sun, 38 degrees Celsius. Not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Oh yes, I do. 37 is 100 degrees. So around 100 degrees Fahrenheit out here today. It was a pretty stinking hot day. Cured the paint really well though. Uh, <laughs> and we are only doing this in spray can. So uh, it's coming up really well for that. All right, guys. As always say, we'll see you tomorrow on the flip side. Okay, guys. Okay, so we're bringing it back into the corner of this door that I stuffed up yesterday. I discovered that it was pretty damn low. <laughs> uh, sanded it out again this morning and um, that corner and had a look and actually sanded it. Put the straight edge across it and I discovered it was a little bit low just in here. So we're building it up again. I've, I've ground all that back to bare again. Uh, oh, sorry, down to the other um, coating. Uh, of filler which wasn't too deep and I've built it up so hopefully it is going to be um, high last night we had a, not a good storm too splashed up dirt everywhere so yeah um, oh, I've got to fix up that yet too bit of over spray and stuff there um, yeah so I'm gonna fix that up today uh, and yesterday afternoon I thought oh, we won't get any rain so I've been working on the top of uh, this guy here, um, which is good. So you know those spots that I ground out and showed you. So I've been uh, getting rid of the rust in the top of that door. Um, this, I didn't know, had two little dents in it. So bring that out a bit. It's, it had two little dents in it. So I filled that um, up. I can actually feel that it's still a little bit wavy. I can see that across there, not really, you know, I have to sand, give it a bit of a sand to about 400 so I can actually see how wavy it is. 
a little bit wavy still just there so that must be a little bit low uh, this little bit there was okay it just had a couple of nicks just there and there on the scene uh, it also had spider rust in it so I got rid of all the spider rust and um, then filled it up but all the rust around this door and all along our um, pillar B pillar B pillar mm, don't know <laughs> Are you, leave in the comments with a A or B or C or I don't know in these things I think A pillar is up the front B pillar is the second one down um, often here where they they race and they get hit behind the B pillar and apparently it's not um, not illegal to do that it's just Robin's racing uh, my brother's into saloon cars and all that so if you're really tricky and not very well liked you'll uh, slosh people out behind the B pillar I think it is and uh, and spin them out but it's not illegal because they just touch them and they happen to spin out so a bit more work today get the um, door um, primed up, sanded and hopefully painted along with the this bit along here that needs doing um, that corner there so hopefully this will all the white along the hole and look at this for a stuff up would you oh my god paint everywhere but that'll come off um yeah so hopefully that uh white will be the same color all the way along by the end of the day if i've got any it's Sunday here, I might have to nip down to uh, all of our auto stores. I know I nipped down to one yesterday and they ran out of the cups that they they mixed the paint in with the lid and pressurise it in the, in the can. And I'm, I'm guessing you're all saying, why don't you buy a compressor? Uh, why don't you do it properly? And it's like, well, the amount of money I'd spend on a compressor, um, I don't have in the bank at the moment. So, yes, yeah, spray can, spray can city. Uh, when I can afford it, I'll, I'll get another spray can and I always go to the one spot get the spray cans um, and the guy who mixes them he's really good he uh, has mixed this paint um, I went to a couple of other stores and the paint was a little bit different colors uh, here and there but this guy knows his stuff um, so the paint has been consistent with almost the old color of the old paint and I did discover that um, I always buy one of those you know those little pressure packs I wonder if I've got one in here um, do, 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 do. no, not in that one. I'll open the slider. Ah, yeah, these little guys. Uh, just a little pressure pack that's already pre coloured. I always go and try to find a colour, because these are only like, uh, what, nine, ten bucks Australian. A colour that matches close first. And what I can do then is spray that colour on because the pressure packs that you buy, they're a very thin paint, they're meant for a top coat, sand it down to a top coat, so I buy, it, buy these, spray them, um, if it's a close colour, and then I spray the uh, top coat over it with the good paint, which costs Australian and more, but anything from 30 to 40 bucks a spray can, I know, it's expensive. So that sort of saves me a little bit of money in the fact that it goes further. Now I've discovered that the colour of this bus, it's called Bambus or Bamboo Yellow, there's a Hyundai colour uh, that's come out and it's called Sunflower Yellow. Very, very close. I'll just show you here where I'm stuffing around with it. Um, that's the colour of the Hyundai there. Now you can see the undercoat underneath along here. So that's the colour of the Hyundai. It's a little bit brighter yellow, but it's a damn good match in these little spray cans to go over and you can see when you go over stuff with the, the dark undercoat, if you can get lighter stuff, good oh. Um, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Yeah, so I've discovered this, this Hyundai colour and I, I looked at a car the other day that drove past and that is the colour of my bus except it's brighter. So if I ever get this thing resprayed properly, I'll probably get it done in that, um, that Hyundai colour because it's a good match. I'm not going to respray it in any different colours. I should like the colour of this. It's grown on me. I sort of looked at it and went, ugly mustard. Baby shit mustard. That no, it's okay. It'll do. A couple of stickers on the doors, like on the window over there. Who's going to know the difference? Uh, then it'll be my bus for a while. 
All right, guys, so I'm going to sand that corner down and uh, see how we go with that now. Um, and bring you back in after I sand that corner down, see if it's any better. All right, see you shortly. Ooh, a bit of, ooh, a bit of hard work there. Uh, all I can say, guys, is I didn't realise how low it was. You can also see a high spot here. I'm going to have to uh, fill that up with a bit of spray putty. It's, it, I can feel it. It's pretty good now. Uh, it was not curved at all. It was flat there. And you can see in the profile of the other corner of the door, um, it's actually curved. But it's because of that dent. Um, and hopefully it looks a bit better. It is... Um, Got a bit of a curve in it, it's not too big. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> but yeah, you don't realise till you sort of go, oh, I might just might just leave it and do it again and see how we go. But um, yeah, I'll put a bit of uh, spray putty over the top of that and we'll see how and sand that down and see how um, how much better it really is. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Uh, it's an Audi, not an Innie anymore. <laughs> All right, we'll continue on. Uh, I'll have to get some more. I don't really need it. This is just a different colour spray putty, a different brand. I actually like prefer the blue than the grey because it's a little bit lighter. But we'll continue on. We'll um, sand back our spray putty. We might have to do a, a couple of coats of high fill primer over the top of that. But no, look. Um, if you anything what you find, leave it a day. Come back to it and uh, fix it up properly and uh, yes it takes time and with anything that's painted it takes time and I've learnt my patience by doing any painting nowadays. Okay so we'll bring you back in after I've sanded it and um, the other thing you know if you are waiting for something to, to finish go on to something else I mean there's no hard and fast rules is there so I went on to this the door well, I'll have to wait for that other thing. Especially if you've got other things to do, go and do them. It means you're sort of killing two birds with one stone instead of wasting wasting your time. All right, we'll bring you back in shortly after that dries and um, give it a nice sand. Might even chuck some paint on it today. See how we go. All right, so that's dried nicely now, guys. I'll uh, sand it down and we'll go from there. Look, I've had a couple of people say to me, why are you doing it like this? Why don't you, like, undercoat all the bits that you need to do and then spray the whole lot? Uh, it's like eating the same thing for breakfast every day. I don't like to, uh, and I'm not going to. You guys can do that. Um, it makes logical sense to me, but I like to do things a little bit different, a bit wacky. My God, I'm a Volkswagen owner. You never just do uh, one thing and do it logically, do you? Well, if you did, you wouldn't own a Volkswagen. You'd own something reliable and um, like a Ford Bronco. <laughs> Sorry, Bronco owners. I just realized that the door slid open. And I was painting. I painted a nice stripe across the hubcap. That'd look cool when you're going down the road. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. And as we said, overspray and stuff and that. I enjoyed doing that. <laughs> Things how I do them. Yeah, you get a bit of a giggle here and there. Is it more work? Yeah, look, it's a little bit more work. This cup I've kept stuffed anyway. Got nice scrape marks uh, across it. So <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's actually gonna take the hubcaps off and put moonies on them. Yeah. And probably four-wheel drive tyres. These tyres I can't use. It's a shame because they have the best tread uh, because they're over 10 years old, as we said, sitting 15 years. It really sucks. But, yeah, so um, reliabilities, Volkswagens, in the day, yes, you keep the things up to them, and but uh, keep the services, etc., up to them. And they were a pretty reliable vehicle. Really... Uh, people said to me about the unreliability of the water boxer engine or the wasser boxer as they were called hey look this thing's done 300,000 I think 300 and something thousand the motor's still uh, apparently original other than it had the leaks in the head um, it might not have gone far I don't know it was a local car but uh, 
had the leak in that one side where they've broken the studs off. But we'll get to that. I'll save that uh, for a later date. But yeah, that's why I just muck around and spray over the top of things and pre-spray over the top of things and uh, have a bit of fun building something. I don't um, don't do any rhyme or reason uh, with my madness. I just want to look at what I can do and uh, how I can get it to look good really quickly. Maybe that's it. All right, I'll bring you back in later on. Okay, guys, just bring you back in to the door. All done. Worked out well. Well, almost all done. It's my needle mark there. In the paint. Not happy. There it is, right in the middle, I hope. Anyway, that's okay. Uh, not too bad, but um, I ran out of paint. <laughs> and you can see the undercoat under it, so I'm going to have to whip into town and get another spray pack of them. Um, of this lovely bambus or bamboo yellow whatever it's called um, yeah so you can see where it's it's um you can see through it um, but it turned out really well I'm happy with the door now uh, and it'll probably be my last video on the door because you're getting sick of me hearing about the door the sliding door the sliding door so uh, I'm just gonna paint it and you guys can see um, how it's gonna turn out right at the end anyway so uh, the secret is nice light mist over the whole area, light mist. Okay, from there, a little bit heavier coat over the top, that's what I do. I wait for about five or six minutes. Um, I can test it, I could test it here to see how hard or soft it was by putting my finger in it. I went, no, I'll wait another five minutes or you know, a couple more minutes before it goes tacky. And then I put a final coat over the top. Now, with the spray cans, <laughs> Ooh, there is a little tiny bit left, but anyway, with the spray cans, a lot of people say, Pshh. it's the flick at the end uh, that a lot of people um, don't quite get. Uh, it's okay with, the, with a, um, a gun, your finger is sort of around here. Spray cans sometimes will shoot off a little bit more. So when I get to the end, of where I'm running, yes, I, I let my finger off the spray can, but I flick it away from my job. So I'm not gonna get a line and then double up over the top. So I'll flick it on. I'll just do it, what I mean. I'll flick it on and then I get to it and I'll pull it around. Now my wrist actually clicks a bit, so uh, you can, a lot of people I've seen do it with their thumb. They can control their thumb a lot better. So it's flicking it on flicking it on all the way from the car all the way back off the car okay to get rid of that um, uh, line that you get when you spray just like you get a double up of the paint on either edge of that line and it will run it will run <laughs> trust me on that I know um, don't overdo your painting okay if you run out of paint Wait for a minute, go get some more, light sand, paint it again. It's not going to hurt. Uh, it, you'll get a better finish that way anyway. But the secret is, right at the end, make sure your can faces away and you stop it. Come down, face it away and stop it. A little bit of a flick of the wrist. All right, so that's we'll do it on the door. Um, for the minute, we'll get it all finished. Probably can't even see because there's lots of different... Um, I don't know how you put it, it's a little bit whippy, just in one area, but it's actually not, it's a dry bit of spot of paint, just here where I can see, so it's a dry spot of paint. Um, it turned out really well. 